Do you know your primary personality style, but better yet, do you understand how to work better with other people in sales and in coaching? Let's dive into that today on the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 232. And you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien personality styles. Very important, actually. And I think it's something that most people kind of overlook. Absolutely. You know, in our last episode, episode 231, mm. touched on it a little bit because we were finishing up a series on how to build an agent training program, how to run that program, and then how to coach your agents to success. And we, we decided that this is a good topic. And it's just literally one piece of the whole module that we have in our real estate sales builder program, module five, on personality styles, communication, uh, preferences, and the sales cycle is actually that that module. So today we thought we would cover just this key piece around the four primary uh, personality styles. And we're going to go with this version that we have, but you know what? We're familiar with DISC and I've done, you know, you've probably done them all too, right? The you color know, the, code. The color, are, what animal are you? What color are you? To me, they're all similar. They all have similar things that you yeah. fall into one of primary four, one or four primary categories. And without... And without, and we just want to talk about this from a perspective of when you're real clear about who you are, you're better able to communicate and and work with other folks in all areas of your life. But I also know as we get older too that we have the ability to, frankly, you know, take on all the personality styles if you have to. But I do know that usually under stress or you know times of stress, mainly stress, I would say or serious situations, you tend to go back to what your dominant style is. Would you agree with that? You know, I, Absolutely. I think definitely over your, your span of your career or your mm -hmm. life, depending upon what your focus is at any given time, you can kind of ebb and flow throughout the different colors on the spectrum, right? But I think you're absolutely right. In the time of demand or crisis, you absolutely revert to a specific thing, and that's something that's pretty consistent throughout your life because that's what you—that's what you are. That's who you primarily are. It's funny when you take this test if you've never taken it before. I remember the first time I took this test was uh, I was at Walt Disney in the management training program, and um, you could tell people wanted to be a certain. People always try to hedge the test, right, and to get to where they want to be, and it's really not that hard to do, honestly. If you want to be no. the most dom, you know what is considered the most dominant uh, uh, characteristic, you can hedge your bet there. But if you were really being honest about it, uh, you might find that you're not exactly in that spot. That's a great. You know, there's that's a great point. You there's not one of these is better than the others. You might think about one of them might being better, but really they all are integral. If we didn't have all four of these personalities, yeah. we'd have one heck of a weird system. No, it would be weird. And, and answer the way you, to your point, answering those questions, you can tell which ones are more the analytical and so on. Sure. Right. And they ask them in various ways, but I think they build into the test taking to, to try to get those yeah. false. They do. Usually and, questions are answered, asked more than once. Yeah, the they are. Way. Yeah. So they can do it. But what we're going to cover today is, it does start with understanding who you are first, which to me, you know, what's that quote to know thyself? Because when you really are clear about who you are, then it all starts to open things up. And if you study this personality stuff or behavior matrices or any of that, or, or get into, you know, NLP, neuro linguistic programming, it really helps you understand how you've got the programs that you have through your upbringings, through your you know, education through the people around you who's influenced you and through your just general experiences in your environment. That's right. So we're going to talk about each of these four key characteristics and what motivates each and then just bring it all home to discuss how how does that impact you in your everyday life, but in sales. And then if you're in a role of team builder or broker, uh, how do you coach and motivate others? Okay, because it's all the same thing, right? So what we have up on the screen, if you're listening on the podcast, is the, the four quadrants as we use it. And, and I've interchanged it and we put our training together. We do talk about DISC because a lot of people are familiar with DISC. Uh, you know, there, there used to be a way to get a free version of that over at Tony Robbins. Now there's just a really watered down version. And then they want you to, uh, you know, pay for a bigger version. But honestly, there's tons of free 
personality style things online. Sure. But this is a very simple way, this quadrant. I'm just going to describe it. In the upper, there's a quadrant, four quadrants. In the upper left-hand corner is the driver or the director. The upper right-hand quadrant is the analyzer or the thinker. And then we have the bottom quadrants on the lower right, the right hand, I guess the best way to describe that is the lower right side of the quadrant is the supporter or the relator, which brings us to the left quadrant. If you can visualize it, the lower left quadrant is the promoter or the socializer. Now, how we do this very simply is when I teach this class, when I teach this in some of the CE classes I do, we just have two lines, a vertical and a horizontal line. And the top of the horror of the vertical line is task oriented and the bottom is relationship oriented. We just tell people under stress, when you're in a, think of the last time you were in a stressful situation and put, if, if times get a little tough or a little stressful, do you tend to be more task oriented or are you more about how's everybody feeling in the relationship and you're on the continuum somewhere and you put a dot and then the vertical, the horizontal line has on one side, the left side, dominant and outgoing and on the right hand side, more flow with and reserved and in the same question under, under stress, uh, in a stressful situation, where do you fall on that quadrant, on that spectrum, rather, on that line? And then you're going to draw, uh, you know, connect the two dots, if you will, and it puts you into one of the quadrants. So kind of hard to describe that. But if you're seeing it, if you're watching, then you can see it. But if you're listening on the podcast, you can check out the video on YouTube and get a sense of this. And But the, the bottom line here is you, you end up being in one of those if you're truthful about how you are, okay? And, and honestly, it's powerful because it's, yeah, I was thinking of this the other day. I think you and I were talking about this, Matt. Like we were talking about the differences in personalities when there is um, confrontation or something right. that has to make people feel, or there's a challenge, or there's a flood in a house, or there's this or that. You know what happens, or you have something happen, and that's what I, that's what I think you have to think about because you know if you're the type of person who's going to immediately go, let me take charge. What where we we got to go get this done and that done versus someone and that would be the driver you know versus the thinker who would be what caused this let me just you know let me get all the details before i can really decide what we have to do next not that that person might not take action because they're task oriented yep. and so that the top part of the quadrant are the people who are task oriented first and then they're then they're just a little bit more dominant versus a little bit more go with the flow which is the thinker and then the bottom part of the quadrant is the people that are more relationship based they're not about the task so on the one side you have the promoter who is definitely more outgoing and the supporter who is like the analyzer or the thinker more go with the flow more reserved so you fall generally into one of those categories not that listen matt through the course of my career however many times we've taken these tests yep. when i was in leadership positions in companies i was definitely I tested high D, yep. but when I first did this test years and years ago, I was definitely supporter. Yep. I was supporter and I've never really been analyzer. That's not me. However, I can do that stuff if I have to, but it's not my natural place that I go. But you right. do it very well. See, that's the thing yeah. talking about how you can blend off or I had that same, I had a, a similar, but different experience. When I first took the test, I was a high D. Um, and as I have uh, gone on throughout my career, I've moved more into the promoter quadrant. Right. However, I have to say, if you had to do, if using the crisis scenario as your um, your baseline, I would always be D. Yeah, that's me too. So my the last time I took this, like outside of, C, of the CEO kind of thing or, right. you know, uh, C-level positions, I, I fall more into the high I. I still have some D. Because I like to just take charge and get things done, but uh, I have more I or promoter, and still that supporter is there, and always the the systems person. Even though I really pride myself on being organized, and, but it is it's, it's not natural. I had to make myself become the 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 systems person, which makes me work better. But I'm more go with the flow, and let's just go out and have some fun and be spontaneous, which right. is the promoter. So let's go into each of these a little bit more in detail, and then we'll talk about how it all interrelates. So. The driver, and again, if you're a podcast listener, I really encourage you to go and check out today's episode uh, 232 on our YouTube channel because my good friend and partner here, Matt Emerson, has outdone himself wow. on the graphics and the in inner meaning and the subtext that goes with the imagery that we have for today's topic 
you, you just don't want to miss it. And so he's using uh, shoes, okay, like mostly uh, well, really cool shoes and in colors. Well, we had colors because the colors were are one of the other ways you do it. And the driver in our scenario is red. So anyway, the driver or the director are people who are just more confident, self-directed, they're energetic, they're decisive, they're the risk takers of the world and they're all about the results, right? They like to be the leader of the group, they respond to the ideas of others when they're logical and reasonable and generally when they're more in alignment with what they want, right? Mm. So their strengths are practical application of ideas. And one other thing before we continue to move on through these characteristics is even within the quadrant of the director, you have levels of that. Yep. So you have that spectrum of, somebody who's super high D, like even if you take a test, it's like what number is your D versus, you know, the high and, and be really intense to be versus someone who's still has those characteristics, but they're more balanced. Okay. So that's the driver. And what else do we have on the uh, driver here? Okay. So the key characteristics, confident, assertive, decisive, forceful, the effective leader, if they're balanced, right? Result oriented. Mm -hmm. And if they're not as balanced, these are the folks that can really, for others that are not like them, feel they can be very aggressive, pushy, and overpowering. So the key word for the driver or the director is results, and they want to produce results in a practical manner, right? That's the driver. Those are the key characteristics of the driver. Um, so how do you relate and communicate with drivers? Well, Give them the bottom line. So if you're in a sale, so let's talk about sales situation. Yeah. And I'm going to go back and forth with sales, or if you're coaching somebody, or managing somebody, or training someone who's the driver. <clears throat> it's it's being, you know, what drivers don't like people who take forever to get to the point. So give them the bottom line. Be brief. Avoid generalizations. Don't keep repeating yourself, which is something I do, and I have to work on that. Set deadlines for drivers. Uh, be responsible. They'll react. They'll they'll you know, even for if you're in a sales situation or you're coaching, this is what drivers want and they'll respond to that. And they'll get that. They'll like, people will naturally like when you're really clear about who you're speaking with and what they like to do and what their map of the world is and how they see things. And you're respecting that. Even if you're not like them, people will really instantly get into rapport with you because you're like, wow, you really get me. You understand right. that I want you to be responsible for your actions. I want you to focus on results. I want you to let me be in control of the situation. So focus on solutions rather than problems. Don't take try to take control. And this is a big one. This is where the power of understanding how, how much you are in control. So if you're a driver and you're working with another driver, the best way to control the situation is to let that other driver take control or feel that they're in control, even though you're leading them down the path of, of that. You're helping them. It's the best thing that you can do. If you're not self-aware, then you will butt heads with people yep. because you're trying to be right and you're trying to get them to be your way and you're not recognizing that they're like you and they just want to get to the bottom line. It's all great if you're on the same page. OK, so you'll understand that those conflicts can come up if you're trying to get them to come over and be to do you do what you want. Right. So don't make excuses, have a direction, make any changes known in the schedule or procedures be on time. You know, this is what this is what you have to do with the driver. You know, knowing yourself and, and being in a room of drivers, if you're a driver, can be the most rewarding experience in the world yeah. to get all the other drivers to do what you want to do is really that's like right? that's fun. And then so and if they're not super self aware, you're like, wow man, they have no clue that I am totally in charge of this whole thing. Okay. Yes. And, so anyway, I, lo I love talking about that part that's of it awesome. as well, right? Yep. So the promoter, the promoter is got these snazzy blue you know, shoes, they're hanging out on a grass in our, in our graphic here from Matt. And this is perfect for the promoter because the promoters are the socializers and the disc, they're the high eyes. Yep. So the, they are innovative, flexible, spontaneous, creative. They're idealistic. These are the socializers. They are more risk-taking. They're up, they're like, they're on the risk-taking side, like a driver. Um, they like the, but they're about the drama, the style, and it's all about imaginative design they're more into fresh ideas. They're passionate about what they do. So some of their key characteristics, just name some of them are imaginative, creative, visionary, enthusiastic, innovative, but they can also, if they're on the negative side of their characteristics, they can be unrealistic, unreliable. These are the folks that are generally going to be late 
inconsistent. They can be impulsive and definitely impatient. They get bored easily because yeah. it's like, what's next, right? The key word for promoters is action. They're on the action side, you know, the task oriented side of the, uh, I mean, uh, they're on the, uh, yeah, the more dominant outgoing side of the quadrant. Absolutely. Uh, and promoters want things done with a sense of drama and style. They don't want to be bored. Okay. So there's, they're going to be a little bit more, you know, let, let's go, oh. let's go, let's go have some fun with this, right? Fun. It's like, you, you know what? It's like going to a party or to going to a dinner, right? You can, you can serve your tacos or you can serve your tacos with flair, right? So, I mean, it's, all, it's like, you know, plate presentation as opposed to just throwing things on a plate. So in sales, if you are working with a promoter, and so here's the deal. If you're a promoter and you're working with another promoter, then you get it. You're going to naturally do it. But the problem of two promoters working together is they might not get anything done because <laughs> it's yeah, going to be, true. you know, all right. So, but if you're, if you're not a promoter and you're, it's not natural for you to be like this, you fall into one of the other three quadrants. These are the ways that you need to relate and communicate with promoters, whether it's in a sales situation whether you're managing or coaching people is they, they want you to be enthusiastic. They want you to be involved. They want to be heard really, you know, same supporters want to be heard too, but promoters want to, to make sure that you've heard what they're saying and that you're, you're dialed in and you're hearing them. Okay. They want you to be flexible. They're okay with change. They want to focus on the creative idea. So if we're talking about a sales situation, you know, and if you had two people that you were showing homes to, and one was a driver and one was a promoter, the promoter is all going to be about what the house looks like and the design and the flow of the house where the director or whatever their important things are. It's like, does it check their boxes? You know, can we, are we going to make a decision soon? And, you know, they're still looking for that functionality and so on. But the promoter is more about how does it feel? You know, what does it look like? The so, promoter is also in a transaction going to be more adaptable to change when things turn up in an escrow. That's true. Uh, so you can also talk about their dreams and if you're coaching a, a promoter, talk about their dreams and possibilities. They're excited about the the growth and the movement and the things that things are never going to stay the same. That's what's going to really make a promoter crazy. They're the socializers of the world. Let them talk and ask questions. Focus on the positives, not the negatives. Don't interrupt them, you know, and, and avoid overloading them with too many details. If the the information needs to be around the, the part of the world that they want to be in. Okay. So that's the socializer. Um, and that's a real outgoing person. The supporter, a lot of times I'll call the supporter or the relator, the power behind the throne, right? Yep. These are the people who are co they're very cooperative, honest, sensitive, warm, understanding. They relate to others. They, they want harmony. They're more informal, they're approachable, and they're more tactful in business. They place emphasis on people, over the task. Okay. The, it's about the people first and then the results. Um, they're concerned with the values and feelings of those around them, including their own. They really definitely want to be heard. Yeah. So supporters have, um, are yellow and are, are really cool. And they have these, these high top converse yellows. Those, that was a good choice for supporters because the, the, this picture is very much a worker, right? They're, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're, these are good pair of shoes that are going to be used a lot. And, they're not super fancy, but they're supportive, right? Yep. <laughs> Especially the high tops. Okay, good choice, Matt. <laughs> I have a pair just like that, except they're not yellow. Which yeah, I have red ones like that. Interesting. All right. Oh. All right. There you go, red. Yeah. Mine? mine are black, actually. Yeah, I have some black ones, too. So there you so are. Key, key, black goes with everything, right? Key yeah. characteristics. Okay, understanding, gentle, loyal, cooperative, sensitive. That's one issue. They can be. They can definitely get their feelings hurt. Diplomatic, yeah. appreciative. They can be overly sensitive. They can be a little bit more passive and slow to act. The key word for supporters is feelings. They want su supporters want to be done, want things to be done harmoniously, and they want to be personally involved. So a supporter can feel overwhelmed. If you are a high D and you're working with a supporter, whether you're in a sales or a coaching situation, that person is going to not get along with you or not respond to you if you are too pushy and too overwhelming and you're not dialing it back. And remember the key here, and I'm using this as an example, the director might be like, why is this person not making a decision or get or seeing, or if you're in a high eye or promoter, why is this person not as 
excited about all of this and let's go out and do this and try new things and, and yeah. be okay with change because they're not, that's the point. They're comfortable with more routine, but they like being the supporter and they want people to feel better. They want to be that person that's helping everything out and that's how they're getting their feelings of, of uh, contributing. Okay. Uh, so you have to understand that. So you have to be clear that when you're working with that person that they want you to, you know, really hear them. Okay. So how do you, how do you work with somebody who's a promote, a, a, a supporter depending? And again, you have to know what your style is and get in these people's shoes, right? Let's get in their shoes, Matt Emerson. Get in their shoes, Jenna so we're gonna do, If we're, if we're very abrupt and we haven't talked about the thinker yet, but if we have a certain way that we communicate, if we're talking to a supporter and we want to work with them in, as in a sales situation because we want to get them to close and you know sign a contract, or if we're coaching them, we need to be friendly and personal, positive, polite. It's all about trust and rapport for everybody, but for this group of people, you're not going anywhere until you have their trust, and you're only going to do that for by building rapport and getting into seeing their map of the world and, and listening actively. These folks want to be heard. They don't, they're not always heard because everybody's, the other groups are generally more overpowering in one way or another, whether you're a right. thinker or promoter outgoing, or you're an outgoing director, take time and provide clarification, create a comfortable, relaxed climate, create an experience they can relate to, express your interest in them and what you expect from them and avoid being confrontational and overly aggressive. It's just not going to work. They're going to, they're going to retreat more and they're going to shut down and they're not going to decide to do anything. Okay. All right. That brings us to the analyzer, the fourth quadrant or the fourth one we're going to talk about. Another word, keyword for the analyzer is the thinker. So these folks tend to be very logical, thoughtful. They're also very, they can be very loyal, exact, dedicated, steady, and really definitely organized. Okay. These are the people that have the lists that have the details, that are the spreadsheet people. They might, like be a little, follow, might be a little OCD. Maybe. They like following directions and work at a steady pace. Generally, these people, like we all tend to go to jobs and lines of work and careers that match our personality styles. So, And it's not to be that everybody that's an analyzer or a thinker works in a detailed field, but they, if you were to look at people who are analysts, systems engineers, engineers of the world, um, they probably have a high analyzer thinker component in their personality style. Okay. Right. So the, uh, the CPAs of the world, the accountants, the people that like numbers and like details and things make sense to them. That's the thinker, the facts, just the facts, please. Okay. So what are, uh, are some other key characteristics? Uh, objective, logical, thorough, very precise, and very detail oriented, very disciplined, they can be very cautious, aloof, and indecisive. This is really important when you're working in sales with them. Absolutely. You know, they can, can appear uh, unemotional. They can also appear very abrupt. Like they may come across very abrupt. That's just being, you know, precise. So they're not as relationship oriented. They're task oriented. They're up there with the director on the task scale. They're just you know, they're more, um, they're not more outgoing. They're more introverted for the most part. Their keywords thinking, they want things to be done right. So how do we work with this group of people? It's so important. This is the easiest one to really understand if you're not the thinker. If you're the thinker, you get it. If you're a thinker, then you, if you're an analyzer, you know, I got to find out what this person needs. If it's in a sales situation, what are the, what are the most important things that they have to be able to check off and get an answer to before they make a decision? If you're coaching somebody that's an analyzer, it's a very similar thing. You know, I used to think that people that are, are thinkers are not going to be great at real estate sales because they're not generally outgoing. But here's the deal. You always attract your, you, you can attract your own tribe, right? right. So a, another person if you're methodical in the way you do your business, I know several people and I've coached several people who are uh, high uh, C's or thinkers, analyzers, if you will. And they just are into the systems. And what happens, especially if you're building a team, you may find some people that are more outgoing to be on your team. Or maybe you're, maybe the person that you hire as an assistant is going to have, um, you know, have those skills 
that are a little bit more outgoing, or maybe you're a more balanced thinker, you know, that can do all that. So I'm not, what I'm saying is there's no particular style that's going to be better in sales. It's just about understanding how do you relate? If you're a thinker, how do you relate to the other people? All right. And then if you are someone coaching or working with a thinker, this is how you have to communicate and relate to them. If you're going to get anything accomplished, whether you're trying to make a sale or you're trying to assist them as a trainer, coach, mentor in being successful in the real estate business, you got to focus on the facts and details. You have to be logical. You, you need to be organized and detached and calm and stay calm and recognize that they're not they're going to be slow to make a decision because they need all the facts. So you must know what, are the key ingredients. And so if you write and you'll recognize right away, if you're working with someone like this, okay, yeah, totally. you're asking, it's all of that. And then if you're working with a, with a, an agent that you're coaching or a person that you're, you know, trying to list or, or buy a home with, just, just ask them straight up, L get in their world and say, let's talk about what it is you're going to need to be able to make a decision so that you can buy a house today. If we're coaching an agent, we want to, we want to encourage them to be systematic, but we have to help them with, they don't have to know everything before they go out and, and meet someone. How can they leverage what they what they have is good enough and get out there and do something at the moment, right? So be accurate, use critical thinking, state facts briefly and concisely. They don't want you to be verbose. They want it just like directors, they want you to get to the point, but they want you to be factual. All right. You don't don't want to be over friendly. Minimize the pep talk. Pep talk's not gonna work. A pep talk might work with the promoter and the supporter, but not the analyzer. Okay. Um, be patient, persistent, and diplomatic. Just be clear about what it is that they need, but you may have to coach the agent to help them understand that they might have to, if they're super too analytical, but here's the thing. If they're too much that way, they're going to almost take themselves out of the real estate. That's business right. Because they're going to say that I fit better over here. So somebody who's got a high analyst style, might also have a little bit more balance in the outgoingness that they're comfortable with that and they can be very successful in sales. Or they'll say, this is not for me. I don't like it. It's too, there's too much people. <laughs> there's too much, uh, you know, uh, people don't understand me. Okay. So that again, everything's on a spectrum. We're not putting anybody into a pigeonhole. No, we hey, all know how to adapt and adjust. Listen, all you, uh, you know, directors and um, uh, socializers, one day, a uh, analyzer in real estate is going to figure out, it's going to unlock the key to lead development because those are the people that are going to do it, right? Yeah, no For kidding. And honestly, uh, you know, I have clients I'm working with now and it, it's been a pleasure because I've been super clear, um, you know, about what what they need. And, and then it's like sometimes I've also discovered in working with a particular analytical buyer is that don't make an assumption that they're just never going to do something. Sometimes people just want to get, work through the details that are important to them and then realize that that's, they've gotten it off of their head, if you will. Like I liken it to the situation I'm thinking of right now. I'm likening it to the J uh, David Allen um, getting things done where you have these open loops. And if, some, if you're very systematic about stuff and if, if you don't have a closure on that issue, then it's bothering you. And sometimes the closure is just, that's the way it's going to be. I'll have to accept that next. And I appreciate that in the person I'm working with right now, who's very clear that he just needs to get the answers and then he's okay. It's not like he's getting the answers so that he's going to say, that's it, I'm done. It's just like, I need the answer. I have a question and nobody's answering it. Yeah. And this ties back to rapport building too, right? So, I mean, they might have to have every answer to every little thing that's on their mind in the beginning. And once that rapport is built, there'll be trust there, right? So they'll know like, oh, yeah. this person knows what, I, what, I, what I'm what and what I'm looking for and how I want it and blah, blah, blah. And some of that process, although not all of it, because they are thinkers, uh, might shrink a little bit. You might, you know, find it easier to work through. Yeah, and sometimes it's it's about, you know, the person just being needing to be heard in their way. Right. And, and ultimately, to, to tie this all up, I really feel that what we're saying here is, in nutshell is this right here and if you can see this amazing image we've got always put yourself in the other's shoes so here in the middle using the analogy of shoes i've been trying to describe <laughs> is an image of a great pair of of uh walking shoes walkers and they have um a stripe down the side of them that has all the colors okay so we've got the red director the blue promoter the the supporter in yellow and the green thinker. And that is what the whole point of this is, is that the power comes in being able to be better 
influencer, being better at sales, being a better motivator, communicator, is you're clear about who you are and how you go about your business. And you have such self-awareness that you respect the other people around you. And, and this is what it's all about, self-awareness. I respect that Matt has a different approach to how he sees and, and does things, how he communicates. When I'm aware of that, I may not take things personally. Maybe I'll understand that that's where he's coming from, or maybe I'll, I'll be okay with saying, can we just talk this out because this is what I heard. And so a whole nother topic for another day is, is conflict resolution and how to communicate right. better. But the basis of that is what we're talking about today. Do you, are you clear about who you are? Can you respect and understand that other people are different than you and stop trying to make them be like you recognize that they're over there in their green shoes and that's their world and see if you can relate to them in their world. They will appreciate it. They will appreciate working with you and they'll perhaps decide to work with you. Okay. Love it. Or that's it. I'm telling you so, this, this transcends all areas of your life too. We haven't really talked so much about personal relationships, but absolutely, you know, it's so funny. Every single time we do this, uh, this talk on this, we've done it a lot in the last few months, it seems like, um, you know, you, I start thinking about like, when my wife comes home from work, <laughs> you know, you're right. And you, when you are really thinking about it, you can really change the dynamic of a situation, right? And then after time, you kind of start forgetting about it until you, you bring it up again. But it's really interesting. I uh, think everyone should really have to go through this kind of training and really analyze who they are because it sure certainly helps your <laughs> helps every part of your existence. Yes, and we didn't have to go into an in-depth <clears throat> analysis session here and or study something. It's just taking some basics and applying some basic principles, and there you go. It's funny because Jan O'Brien and I, we've, we, we've been working together for, with each other for a long time, and we absolutely work well together, right? We know each other's lane. Uh, many mm -hmm. times they're the same lane, right? But not all the time. No. You know? It's very cool. And sometimes we can, you know, you know, just like in all relationships, there's times where we can have like, whatever, I can be like, I'm talking too much. I'm not listening to Matt, what Matt is saying. And then I, and then, and then if we have anything that might happen, it's like, I know that he just needs to have some space and then we can talk about it again. Or he knows that I'm like having a day where I'm like overwhelmed and he just listens to me. Right. And so yeah. this is what I love about you, Matt. So Sometimes people just need to be heard, even That's though they're exactly. rambling and ranting. And he's my sounding board. For a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot of, no matter what quadrant you are in there, there's times and you just need to unload, right? And you just need you to get have off something just, like that. And I'm sorry if that's what I seem to do with you all the time. No, you don't. I but I, I'm but better you know, at that than I used to be. You've helped me with that. So. Just talking about, you know, my wife's a school teacher and she comes home with a lot on her plate and her mind every day. And I, she'll, sometimes it really frustrates me. It's like, oh, just get to the point of your story, right? Right? But no, I can't do that because she is trying to detox from her day, right? And sometimes some of the things she says, I know she doesn't say there, right? Because she's saying sure. it to get it. It's what's inside of her and she's getting it out. Anyway, it's... Well, you do the same thing for me. And I know that you're like, would you just get to the point? You're going to tell me the same thing five times. And I'm like, true. I just have to get it out. <laughs> I'm trying to be more succinct in my ranting. Okay. So uh, speaking of ranting, we want to do a big cheer not a rant, but we're excited about this program that we are ever so close to. So close. So close to, to do, especially with the little motivation that we had. A sign from the universe that Jen needs to do her part and get it done was a, a, a client, a previous client reaching out with this great idea uh, that we're, we're exploring that's right in the alignment of if you are listening and you are a trainer, you are a broker, you're a team leader, or you're somebody who wants to you know, build a team and you don't have an agent training program. Well, we already have that training program and it's called Real Estate Sales Builder. But what we're doing now, because we have seriously, in the last couple of years, our focus has seemed to be helping teams and brokers with a training program. That's so right. we already designed a, if you will, a coaching certification program that basically says, how do you take our core 12 module foundational real estate training that works for new agents it works for agents that have been in the business a few years. And it definitely even works for seasoned agents because I use it all the time yep. for people I coach that don't have all the foundational systems in place. Many, many people, that's what most people want when they reach out to us. So we already have that training. We have it in a, de a delivery system that's self coaching and teaching. But what we did was, and what we're about to launch here in the, in the next, uh, within the next 30 days is, a certification program, a trainer certification where you can partner with us, our program, 
and we will show you through our course that we're recording and with some one-on-one -on -one coaching with us if you need it how to take our program and turn it into your agent training program whether you're a small team large team broker mid-sized broker and you need something it has to be augmented with specific uh you know supplemental training to support your forms for your area your software what kind of mls system you use but guess what all of that is in this program from right. a blueprint of how to do that a no kidding coaching manual on how to train how to be a better trainer and coach to how do you take the the modules and actually open up the book and from turnkey start doing the training program down to how do you manage the classes to what exercises do you have them do we have an entire piece on accountability a tracking system everything that you conceivably think of we've either done it because we've done the training ourselves we've right. taken the best pieces of all of that from ourselves and what we've done is training plus all the people we've coached over the years and we really feel we've come up with the best way to use that and the beautiful part is you don't have to the the person we talked to yesterday that i talked to yesterday is reaching out to us because they don't have the time or the desire to create the, they could do it they're great sure. trainers but they don't have the time or the desire to do what we've done it took us six months to build that program yeah. and that's six months of just working on it not doing anything else to get the content right to record the videos to put it on our platform and to get it out there to you right Right. So, um, wh uh, what else can we add to that, Matt, wh that we can partner with people? We have various ways. I mean, anything else you want to add to? Well, no, but get on our list? one thing I do want to add is if you do want more information on that, you can actually contact us at wbnlcoaching.com forward slash forward slash R E S B cert. And that will pull up a form, fill out the form, give us a little information about yourself, and we'll get back to you. We can talk about this in a little more detail, uh, even prior to the launch of this program, because we really have all the stuff ready to go now. It's just a matter of really getting it um, all uh, finalized and up and up and running. Um, if that URL is too much for you to remember, just go over to wbnlcoaching.com, and right there on our homepage is a link to that uh, that form as well. So we, we really want to get you involved in that. If you go to that form and fill it out, once you fill out the form, it will take you over to our um, our our brokers and team leader solution page where you can get some more information about uh, real estate sales builder as well as other things that we provide here at WBNL coaching to help support you grow your business with your agents so uh, go check that out and then obviously as we get closer to the uh, launch of the program we're going to be sending more information out we'll be talking about a lot more here so good stuff awesome that's it what yeah. do we got next week what do we got on our next episode next week whoops gotta have it on that before I click there we go Next week, Mr. Dave Tina Jr., Jen O'Brien, he's your broker. Yeah, he's an owner broker. I've known Dave forever. It's got a, he's got a great story of, of and, a, and such a great success story of how uh, they've taken and built a, a, a company of 500 agents here in Las Vegas. And, and Dave's really into doing coaching, business and life coaching. And so he's got a great story to tell, and we're excited to interview him next week. Yep, that's going to be a good one. <clears throat> all of our ask fives have been fun we're getting well, as we cl get closer to the uh, the mid year i'm going to splice all these together and uh, get some uh, uh, we'll do the 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 ask five mashup and see <laughs> how all of their uh, responses have uh, uh, been so that'll be kind of fun too so what else john o'brien it's kind of exciting that the weather is changing out here in the west looks like we're going to have you know spring kind of really warm spring is it still raining out there in California? No, we had our last little bit of rain yesterday. We might get a little bit next week, but I think it might be the last of the season. But I'm telling you, it's so interesting. The plants are like, what the hell? Because yeah. they're starting to bloom and things are starting to come out, but they're still being a little hesitant about it. I, I, the, the hillsides have never been this green and there's still snow all over the mountains. So um, yep. it's pretty incredible for um, being almost April. Here Good issues point. for water issues in the West. So we're happy about that. I do like seeing the signs of some several trees blooming out here. It's feeling the spring is in the air. Yes. We've had some very, very windy days. I've been out showing homes and super windy. And then we've had some rain, which we need here. So, but you know, and I'm not complaining. I love the weather. It's in the fifties today. Uh, it's fifties and sixties today. So I'll take it as I remember, I don't need it to be 110 yet. Yep. So let's go.
And Jan O'Brien, one last thing. You know, last night I sent you a couple of videos. You know, I love the iPhone oh. where it just pulls those video, you know, images okay. together and gives you their your blast in the past. Six years ago this week, Jan and uh, my sweet P and I went to Yosemite. And oh I had forgotten it was this time of year when I was looking at those pictures because there was a little snow on the ground still and it was a little bit rainy. And oh my God, what a fun trip that was. Why are we doing that again? I don't know. We need to do all. I can't. I just spent such a long time since I've wandered. I cannot wait to get back out there and do that. So, all right, well, okay. let's do it. Let's get up and get up, get up and get out, people, right? That's right. And you know what else? Be forever wandering, but not lost. All right. God.